6.55 in the morning. We've both been up, had a shower again. Just got the porridge on, ready for today. Yep, shorter day today. Hopefully. Sure. Hopefully a shorter day today. It's only about 11, 12 miles to Coniston, so mm. we'll decide what we're going to do when we get there. Yeah. Okay, okay then. Yeah, the porridge should be ready, I yeah. think. Talk to you later. Yep. yep. You ready? I'm ready. Day four of the way. Yeah. Five of the trip. That's it. Just setting off from the National Trust car, uh, car park <laughs> campsite in Langdale. Yeah, very uh, nice. Very 25 perfect. quid, excellent showers, mm -hmm. excellent toilets. Yeah. Uh, reception does close at six, six, opens at eight. So. Yeah, but they're quite happy, you know, if you turn up after six, set up, pay them in the morning, they're quite happy. Okay, right. Yeah, okay. let's go. Let's go. the Langdale Pikes. Something special. Really good. About three miles in, just stopped at the co-op in chapel style for an almond cake and a bottle of pop. Before we crack on, I think we're both struggling a bit, to be honest. Mm, yeah. But, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> so we're just leaving chapel style. Busy little shop, very nice. And I think the next village is Alterwater, and then Scalworth Force, is it? Scalworth Bridge. Scalworth Bridge. It's close. <laughs> Probably both. <laughs> well, according to the sign back there, this path forms part of a company away a 71 mile path and they told us it was only 70 so I shall write to the organisers and we'll complain about that, chuck in a mile in. That was Colwith Force, yep. pretty impressive, and the one before Scalwith Force. I'm not sure if I told you that because the GoPro um, froze. Oh, right. So I don't know whether that bit recorded, but yeah, we've been through Scalwith Force, now we're at Col Colwith Force. And we're going to try and find somewhere for lunch because yeah. it's half past 12. Okay, I think we've got a lot of steps on me. Yeah, a lot of steps next. We've just started hitting styles, by the way. <laughs> All the way from Carlisle to six and a half miles past Langdale, no styles and no style after style after style. Oh, yeah, and no steps over the stone walls as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what did you think of Colwith Forest then? That was pretty impressive, actually. The actual force itself. Yeah. Didn't enjoy the walk up part of it. The path to it. It's just horrible. Horrible, rocky, rooty, 
steep water running down, you know. Mm -hmm. You know the score with these horrible parts. Mm -hmm. Destruction in this wood. Trees down all over the place. Shame, really. But nature, isn't it? Tarn House, iconic place on the Cumbria Way, 48B, I think, or 12A if you're coming from the south. down into Coniston Valley, I guess. I've been to follow the road. It's a bit disappointing, but can't have it all, can you? Tops of the bigger hills covered in cloud. So a disappointing day for hill walkers, aiming for the big ones. But if we could see them, be, think, be the likes of Weatherland, Old Man of Coniston, Doe Crag, etc. Just a mile and a bit from Coniston now. Heads up for any of you doing it south to north. Out of Coniston, there is a real grind up the hill to Tarn House. Uh, yeah, it's a long way and it's a long way uphill. So, you know, we're to the wise. Try and get to it fresh, eh? So we made it to Cumbria Way icon number 438C or what is it, 9B if you're coming from Overston, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. The sheep have been here quite a bit too. There's quite a lot of sheep muck in here. Oh, look at it, it's one field out of Cumbria, out of Coniston. I was sort of in the middle and I wonder we couldn't find it. They go on it they go on about it like it's you know like it's out in the wild and it's not there's bleeding school just next door. Well, con just leaving Coniston. Naturally we went in the the black bull. I nearly said red bull for some reason. The black bull couple of pints. I've had a Cumberland sausage and mash. I've had burger and chips. Burger and chips. So we're fully refreshed, possibly, after our uh, journey to Coniston. So we're pushing on now, hoping to get about five miles or so, uh, find a pitch somewhere not far after the end of the lake and uh, wild camp tonight, just to cut down the miles that we're doing tomorrow. And because Coniston Hall campsite is apparently a bloody nightmare on the weekend. So, anyway, that's the plan. Catch up with you in a bit. I'll show you the lake. Or well, the water, it's called, isn't it? Coniston Water. Just thought I should show you the Coniston Hills, the old man of Coniston, etc. We'll be back here in June. We've got a Cottage book for a week, and we'll be aiming to climb all these Munros, Munros, Wainwrights around here. So you'll see more of them then. Don't know if you can see it, but that's Brantwood across the the lake. Whose house was that then? Ruskin, I think it was Ruskin. Could be wrong. And there's some nice sheep, little bar, very new bar lambs, hiding next to ma'am. Coniston Water, scene of the Bluebird water speed record attempts. Fatal, if you remember. We've come through Coniston Hall campsite, back out into the National Trust land, and now we're on the lookout for a pitch in about 
four miles maybe. And we'll see how we get on. So, iconic feature number 492, the jetty on Coniston. So we've walked all the Coniston bank that we need to now. We've not found a pitch. Actually, that's not true. We did find a pitch, but there are two tents in it. So we're going to crack on out into open country and hope we can find something up there. We've still got about an hour and a half, hour and three quarters. So as long as we can keep going, we're fine.